So Coffee Lake has been released and where are my results? Well, there was a mix up and I was supposed to be sent a CPU with my motherboard, but that didn't happen. And then there's another source where I'm getting another CPU and motherboard from and that's delayed as well. So in the meantime, I'll have my results out in the next few days, but I also wanted to talk about what's out there at the moment. And there's some very solid results already been released, of course. And I want to talk about the Coffee Lake situation in general. And the first thing, of course, is the scarcity of these CPUs. And it's looking like this is very true. And it's the first time where I've seen an overclockable i5 variant not being released side by side, it's big brother, the i7. So in this case, we have the 8600K, not really in stock anywhere, but we've got the i7-8700K that's been released and it's been sold out already. However, there's also two CPUs that I really like from this lineup. That's the i5-8400 and also the i7-8700K. However, that first problem, the scarcity, this could be a double-edged sword for Intel where in that if they don't have the supplies available, then I'd imagine people will be like, well, I'm not gonna buy a Cabby Lake CPU because the Coffee Lake, the new CPUs, are much better value for money. And so if they can't buy a Coffee Lake CPU, then this may in fact drive sales towards Ryzen, which is currently in supply, stocks are really good, and also the value for money is really good. So the second problem I wanted to talk about before we talk about the CPUs themselves is the fact that they've only released one motherboard and that's a Z370 lineup and they haven't released the cheaper variants like the B360 or the cheaper H variants. And this spells a little bit of a problem, especially for people getting into PC gaming and they want good value for money and they wanna buy that i5-8400, which is easily looking like it's really good value for money. It may end up being the best CPU in the Coffee Lake lineup. I just have to test the numbers. I can't wait to do that. But if they can't couple that with a cheaper motherboard like you can on Ryzen, for instance, you can get a Ryzen 5 1600, a B350 motherboard. If you can't do that on the Intel lineup, then this could score problems for Intel, especially in the next three months. So these cheaper motherboards are rumored to come out in the next three months. However, in the meantime, you can only buy an i5-8400 and a Z370 motherboard, which is kind of pointless if you don't want to overclock and you have no intentions of overclocking, then you can save some money. And especially if you're buying an 8400, it's a non-overclockable CPU. So with those two points aside though, let's talk about the i5-8400 first. This is looking like it's my favorite CPU of the lineup as it's going to be bringing some strict competition to the Ryzen 5 1600, which is AMD's six core 12 threaded variant. And this was easily my favorite CPU of the whole Ryzen lineup. It was just the balance king. It's so relevant in 2017. It's so good for productivity for people on a budget. It's also really good for gaming. And so the i5-8400 in ways spells competition to this Ryzen 5 1600 variant. It's really good value for money. You're getting six cores, six threads, but you're also getting that better IPC from Intel's lineup. However, with clock speeds, I'm gonna be checking this out, doing a lot of gaming benchmarks and seeing how it stacks up against the Ryzen 5 1600, both stock and overclocked. And I believe this will be a very good comparison for you guys. But in the meantime, with the scarcity of Coffee Lake CPUs, and if you wanted to build a new PC and you wanted to go the Intel route, then I'd probably recommend buying the CPU now, the 8400, so it doesn't get sold out later on, holding on to it and then waiting for a cheaper motherboard if you want some of the best value for money and you want to go with that Intel option. So the next CPU I wanted to talk about was the i7-8700K. This is definitely going to be a competitive CPU in the market for people looking for that productivity CPU, but also something that it will be easily the gaming king. It has the IPC the same as the 7700K, but in a lot of ways it is looking like it is overclocking a bit higher on average. I've heard of a lot of people already getting 5.2 gigahertz and even without deleting. So I can't wait to get mine delit it, see how high I can overclock it. And also on that note, I believe this CPU is going to be cannibalizing Intel's own higher end lineup CPUs. I can't imagine anyone going out and buying a 7800X or a 7820X now that the Coffee Lake 8700K is released. And in ways, the 7900X is also a big ask as well. If you need those extra PCIe lanes and you want to go Intel, then that CPU is a lot more expensive, over $700 more expensive than the Coffee Lake variant. And it doesn't perform a whole lot better. And in some ways, it won't perform as good, even in productivity where some applications 
are still single and not multi-threaded supported. Like for instance, Adobe Audition, if you want to edit audio, that's still, or noise removal for example, that's still single thread dependent. So in ways, the 8700K won't just be the gaming king, it may in some ways be the productivity king for some people with some applications. However, on that note, even though it's cannibalizing Intel's own lineup, it will be a very competitive CPU. We've already seen the numbers coming out with the Cinebench scores. People are getting around 1600. If they overclock it high enough, they can get near 1700 points. This is coming into the Ryzen 7 1800X territory when it's overclocked. And Ryzen 7, the eight core variant, was indeed AMD's balance king in my opinion. It did gaming very well and it also does streaming and productivity very well. And it is a lot cheaper than the Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. And it also does gaming better than the Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. On the Ryzen Threadripper CPUs, if you want to get the same performance, you have to disable your cores, which I did disagree with doing on the X399 lineup. So 2017 is stacking up to be one of the best years in tech history for the consumers. We're all winning here. When competition comes around, we're all gonna be definitely loving the value for money we're getting. Ryzen 5 1600, now we've got the Intel Coffee Lake response and they are pretty good value for money as well. However, they do have some problems which I've outlined in today's video and how this is gonna spell in the next three months is anyone's guess. I do think it will be a little bit of a problem, especially if people wanting to get on the Intel lineup and if they can't get the CPUs, I mean, for instance, they're already sold out in Australia and the supplies are reported to be very limited. So whether this actually drives more sales towards Ryzen as well remains to be seen or whether people are that patient and they're going to wait until supplies come back in or if people want to get, for instance, the i3-8100, Intel's budget 4-core, which actually looks like it's coming in at a very good price as well and wait for a very cheap $50 motherboard from Intel remains to be seen. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and opinions video today on Coffee Lake. If you did, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. I mean, what do you guys think of the new Coffee Lake release? I mean, I think it's a great thing for consumers, but on the other hand, if the supplies are very limited, yeah, this could be a double-edged sword for Intel. Remains to be seen what's going to play out, but I love reading your comments as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.